Welcome back. Ladies and gents, the time has come to rank definitively the Linux distributions of the world. And I'm kidding because there's absolutely no way you could ever rank every Linux distribution known to man. But we're going to give it a fair shot with some of the biggest ones in the business. Now, I don't want to go out there and uh, name and shame Linux distributions. That's just not what I'm about. This channel's always been about showcasing alternatives. And uh, what you see before you are variations of the logos, or at least some of the logos, of some of the most popular Linux distributions out there. Uh, now, there are a few that are not displayed below that would be on my personal preference list, but I am using the tier ranking or the tier maker uh, website and a template that has already been done up by this guy and zero uh, X Wardo. So whoever you are, good on you for making one of these. And there's others that are in existence as well uh, that it's got an awful lot more of them. But uh, as you can see, we've got lots of grades here and we have so many that it would honestly take me forever to get through all of this. Let me know if you want me to do an extended version and I can give this one a go. But here it is. Today, what we are going to do is we are going to rank these Linux distros and this is 100% unequivocally, unadulterated, pure opinion. Your mileage is gonna vary. With that said, let's get into it. So I've been wanting to do something kind of cheeky and fun like this for a while, and here we are, we're finally doing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move through these distributions and I'm gonna rank them. The biggest and highest praise that you can give an open source project is, by the way, I use Arch, as we all know. Second tier is, it's so good, I'm using this on my phone, because why wouldn't you? It's Linux, come on. The third tier, and what I would, as a, as a high school teacher, call the passing mark, is installing this on my colleague's laptop, because what else do we do with our free time? Now, just below a passing mark is, why did they make this? And the decidedly meh option is don't even bother. All right, well, let's see how many cages we can rattle here in the open source community while still keeping it fun and upbeat. Let's get into it. So, first things first, in no particular order, we have, by the way, I use Arch. Legendary, minimal, build-it-yourself operating system. Uh, this is the one that the community holds in, the, the community of people that use Arch anyway, hold it in the highest regard as the pinnacle of Linux operating systems. It would be hypocritical of me to not place Arch almost at the top of the list of, by the way, I use Arch, but I'm going to put it in the rank below because for me personally, Arch is very cool. I ran it for a while, but I just, I like actually seeing what other people's interpretation of what a desktop OS should be. That's just me personally. If I had all the freedom and all the ability to customize everything how I want it, um, I would definitely use Arch. But I kind of like seeing people's design flair and seeing what other people are up to. And uh, quite frankly, I don't have the time to keep setting up a new Arch system. And I get it, I get it, we could do rolling releases and just set it and forget it for years on end. But I like jumping around, I like having a look. Uh, Arch is still incredible. From a technological standpoint, very, very good. But for me personally, I'm gonna give it a B. It's so good, I'm using it on my phone. Not really. Okay, next up, Debian. In my head, Debian is the Mac Daddy of all modern Linux distributions. It's the universal operating system. You can find Debian pretty much anywhere and everywhere. It's rock solid stable in its own vanilla uh, version and pretty much every big name Linux distribution out there is either benefiting from the project or directly based on the project. So for me personally, I have been so heavily impacted by the work that the Debian project have produced. I'm gonna put it right at the top with, by the way, I use Arch because I think it's that good. All right, next up, let us talk about Deepin. I've got some strong feelings on this one. Deepin is one of those projects that looks amazing. 
and especially with version 20 that is coming out sometime very soon, um, there is so much potential for what this distribution can do. But I also realize that the current climate of the Linux community, indeed the techni technologically informed community, is somewhat wary in my mind for very unfounded reasons maybe about the whole privacy spyware issue. I think Deepin do as much as they possibly can to prove that that's not the case, but trust is an issue. And so on that note, I'm gonna put Deepin uh, on a B. Uh, we're already looking fairly top heavy here. Um, Deepin has done amazing work for user interface and user experience design. If you wanna check out a video all about that, um, check the link in the cards. I did a top five Linux distros based on their user interface and user experience design. Uh, so yeah, love Deepin, but for me personally, I don't run it. Um, it's just that little bit too glossy for me. And you know what? Hmm, <laughs> I'm gonna drop it down one. Balance it out a little bit. Kingpin in my head is still Debian. Technologically, I just have so much respect for that project. I love Arch, but don't personally benefit from it. Deepin, I don't use it. I could recommend it, but it's a bit harder to recommend considering its reputation at the moment. I hope that makes sense. All right, bumping onto elementary OS. Well, ladies and gentlemen, elementary OS has been a project that I have followed on this channel for a very long time. Uh, back when they first released their first Ubuntu spin-off, and uh, mostly it was just a slightly different panel layout and a themed icon pack. They've come a long, long way and I've loved watching the journey every step of the way. And Elementary OS has always been a part of my heavy rotation of Linux distros that have gone in and out of pretty much every laptop I've owned since the project's inception. I have so many good things to say about the Elementary project and I realize it's not everyone's cup of tea because of the way that they tend to uh, lock down the user interface to some degree to what uh, they believe an effective computing interface is. But like I mentioned with Arch, that's kind of how I like it. I like seeing different takes on user interface and user experience, especially if you can convince me, make a good argument for why it makes sense. The elementary team are kings of great communication. Release in, release out, they get better and better with outlining why they make the decisions that they make and, uh, and how it stands to benefit the open source community as a whole. And then I've got lots of great things to say about their model for uh, giving developers what, they, um, what the user thinks their software is worth and encouraging uh, donations on a regular basis to open source projects that we know and love. So elementary is going straight to the top of the list, baby. By the way, I use Arch 100%. Alrighty, so uh, this is actually gonna be really difficult for me to be super critical of, of these Linux distros because I have benefited so much from learning about Linux and, uh, and seeing all the different flavors of it. So just looking even at the projects that we have left here, it is really difficult for me to try and fill out some of this bottom stuff, but we're gonna, we gotta try and go there anyway. Okay, so next up, Fedora. It's an RPM based distribution. It's known as the test bed for a lot of Red Hat stuff, but Fedora is in my mind, it is the Linux flagship uh, when it comes to pure open source representation of what uh, of what the Linux operating system can be. Um, they don't bundle anything proprietary or, or weirdly licensed in the operating system. They keep it smooth, they keep it pure, they keep it vanilla, and, uh, and the performance gains and the, the user experience that you get is so good. And um, technologically, they push the boundaries of what can be done in a release-based operating system. And so for that, I'm going to give it a, it's so good I'm using this on my phone. I don't know, I feel like that's fair. Next up, KDE Neon. This is an Ubuntu based distribution that has an, an Ubuntu LTS base. And then it has a uh, constantly updating KDE layer that sits on top of it. Now, I have run KDE Neon in the past. I'll try to throw links down to videos that I've done of these things in the past down below if I remember. Uh, but KDE Neon is one of those projects that uh, I definitely appreciate because it gives us a vision of what KDE Neon, uh, sorry, of what the KDE Plasma desktop would look like if it was just run by the KDE team. I could be getting the politics of that wrong, but it's kind of cool. Uh, and so 
For me personally though, I haven't used KDE Plasma consistently for a long time and usually when I do, it's on top of another distribution. Uh, I do love KDE Neon, don't get me wrong, but for me personally, it doesn't have the impact that some of the other distros have because again, I like seeing what other distros do to KDE Plasma. So I'm gonna put it on the why did they make this? I think I totally know why they made it. It seems a bit cruel. KDE Neon is a great project, um, but who am I kidding? All these projects are. Okay, Linux Mint. Uh, this is gonna be so top heavy. You know what, I'm gonna pop around the other side here. We're gonna work our way back. All right, let's talk about the big orange. Let's talk about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is, uh, it is vastly popular. Ubuntu is, uh, if like I said before, how Fedora is the flagship of the pure open source Linux operating system, Ubuntu is the flagship Linux desktop operating system in that it's the one that nearly everyone has used if they have been interested in Linux ever. And, uh, and you don't get that kind of market share and mind share without doing a few things right. And uh, Ubuntu has just gone from strength to strength with a few waverings in between. And, uh, and I feel like they're really on a high at the moment. It's clearly the operating system that I'm using right now and I'm still enjoying it. I think they've done a great job with the LTS release, um, but it has had a rocky past. So I am going to put it on the installing this on my colleague's laptop. Passing grade, great distribution and, uh, and I owe a lot of this channel's success to the rise of the Ubuntu desktop operating system. Um, so a lot of respect for the project, but for me personally, these other ones uh, hit closer to home for me. And I'm just talking about this standard Ubuntu desktop. If we were talking about derivatives here, some of those might sit higher or lower than that. All right, let's talk about Solus. Solus is a completely independent Linux operating system that has its own package management system. It is a rolling release and it has a really great way of managing software and all of that fun stuff. Uh, it has a few custom tools and it does gaming surprisingly well. So definitely go check out Solus if you're kind of into gaming. Um, to me, Solus is the distribution that I would go running back to if any of my big name distributions just fell over in a heap or just went down a direction that I was completely unhappy with. I love Solus as a project. I completely understand why they made it. And uh, it's really tough for me to decide where this belongs. I'm gonna put it in, it's so good I'm using this on my phone. I don't know, I don't know man. Slackware, don't even bother. I'm kidding, I mean, I don't really know that much about Slackware. So everyone who's been using Linux longer than I've been alive, wait, is that even a thing? Is that possible? I'm not sure. If you are a hardcore Slackware user, let me know in the comments. I'm so curious. I've honestly never had a conversation with one online or otherwise ever. Uh, Pop! OS. Pop! OS is a uh, Ubuntu based distribution that is developed by System76, uh, kind of for their hardware, but also made available to everyone to go and use. Um, I love it. They do a lot of great stuff, especially for the developer maker community uh, and their constant updates and tweaks to the GNOME desktop, I think make it more productive and make it work really well with certain sets of hardware. Um, same time though, it is still Ubuntu. It is still, uh, it is still the GNOME desktop uh, with just a few extensions kind of added to it. While I do really like Pop! OS, and I think they are gaining big ground, uh, it's one of those things where it feels like it belongs with their hardware to get the most benefit from it. So even though I no totally know why they made it, for me personally, I'm gonna put Pop! OS on why'd they make this. I do know why they made it, it's a great project, but for me personally, in terms of the choices of operating systems that I would run, I'm gonna put it on why'd they make this. OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE has been around a long time. It's one of the big four. Uh, big four? Fedora, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu. No, I mean Debian. What else was around? Probably Slackware back in the day. OpenSUSE is a long-standing, very stable, very well-engineered uh, Linux distribution. It was the very first video that I made on this channel. 
back in 2010. And, uh, and I've got a lot of love for the project. Having said that, I haven't actually run OpenSUSE on my laptop uh, since probably 2015. So it's gonna go with the why they make this as well. Ah, it hurts. I really do love OpenSUSE. I probably should give it another look. I even tried Tumbleweed for a while, but it gave me all kinds of weird issues. So maybe that's changed. Convince me in the comments to switch to OpenSUSE again. It's been a long time since I checked it out. All right, Manjaro. We're down to like two of the biggest distributions on the planet right now in terms of just mindshare and, and saturation in the community. Both Linux Mint and Manjaro have massive communities behind them and, uh, and are really well funded. They're, active develop they're actively developed. They have great hardware partnerships. These guys have got all of it going on. Uh, Manjaro is now a company, which is crazy. And Linux Mint is, uh, seems to be getting stronger and stronger with their Cinnamon desktop and also their Mate desktop that they help uh, develop on the back end. Um, these, are, these two are really, really hard. Okay, so Manjaro. I'm gonna put it on... I'm gonna say, no, I'm kidding. I'm gonna give it a passing mark. Me personally, I feel like I've just ticked off a lot of people. Me personally, Manjaro is a great project. I love what they've done in making some of the pros and some of the good things about Arch more accessible to the desktop user. I think that's great. And honestly, seeing the project evolve and seeing hardware partnerships come on board and seeing all the cool things that keep getting added to it, I love what they're doing. For Again, me personally, the buttons that that, that tickle my fancy. There's just something about the design sense of Manjaro that never really gelled with me. And I never really felt the need to have the flexibility of the AUR and a rolling release and other things. I kind of like uh, a system that stabilizes out over a long period of time and doesn't change too much until the next big update. That's just kind of how my brain works. And I've um, not been able to stick with a rolling release long enough to see the long-term benefits of that. Also, I've had funky issues with hardware in the past, and all of these things color my experience to go, Manjaro is good, but I'm not crazy about it. And that's just me. It is what it is. Linux Mint, ladies and gents, Linux Mint was the first Linux distribution that I ran full time. I have a lot of praise for everything the Linux Mint community have done. However, recently I feel like their project has stagnated a little bit. And the Cinnamon desktop, while well refined and is well performing now with all of the bug fixes that go into it, I do feel like the project is just not as exciting and as punchy as maybe it once was. It had a vision to make Linux elegant once upon a time. And while that is probably still true, and there are plenty of people that benefit from using Linux Mint, uh, it definitely feels like in a crowded world of, of distributions nowadays, I do kind of wonder why'd they make this? Um, it totally made a lot of sense back in the day when Ubuntu and a lot of the other desktop facing operating systems presented significant hurdles for everyday users like myself to get on board with open source. Uh, and Linux Mint was a fantastic bridge to get there. But nowadays, a lot of the tweaks that the Linux Mint team make kind of come standard on most of these big, big name operating systems. And there you have it, ladies and gents. We have at the top of the list, this is so weird. At the top of the list, on the by the way I use Arch, A grade category, I've given it to Debian and to Elementary. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Definitely I agree with pretty much everything below that though. As much as I hate being critical of some of these big projects that I actually do love. Um, so Arch, Fedora and Solus in the B grade. C grade, the passing grade goes to Deep in Ubuntu and Manjaro. The D grade goes to uh, goes to KDE Neon, Pop OS, OpenSUSE, and Linux Mint, and the E grade is Slackware. Don't even bother. I don't know, guys. I will share the link for this down below. Share with me on Twitter at Ingalactic what your ranking is. Be curious to see what it is. Uh, that was a bit of fun, I guess. Let me know if I should do the really big one that has like a bucket load of. Uh, a bucket load of distros to rank. That could go for a really long time. Hope you all enjoyed it. See you all in the next one.